Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is part two of my how I organize my papers at home video. So if you haven't watched the first part, I recommend you do that first. And I'll have it linked up in the cards above as well as in the description box below. In that first video, I shared how if something takes me less than two minutes, I'll take care of it right away. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I process my inbox. I'm gonna show you how I take care of things from start to finish so that papers don't pile up and create clutter. I can stay on top of my commitments. I can follow Follow up with things or people I'm waiting on and four I can make sure that our living expenses are logged correctly in our budgeting system I hope you find my process helpful for some reason my mic did not record the audio for this portion of the video so I am just going over it with a voiceover what I was saying here is that first things first I have to schedule a time in my calendar to get this done otherwise this is easily something I can put off to be done later and what I do first is I block out time on a day it's usually on a Sunday and then I treat that time like it's an appointment that I have with a friend just like I wouldn't stand up a friend I really try to honor my commitments to myself the second thing I do is is to bring my inbox to my desk and to tame overwhelm I deal with things one by one there are things in here from two months ago and doing this wasn't a priority during the holiday season I've definitely let things pile up but I'm not worried because I know exactly what I have to do for the purpose of this video I've sorted everything into different categories so I can show you what I'm currently working with a bank statement discount codes I want to save but not in paper form waiting for which includes packages i've sent to friends or returns i've made on online orders notes and letters from loved ones which i'll be referring to as mementos a clothing tag and i'll explain why i save this later on and receipts now i'm not going to go through everything in this video because that would just take forever so i will show you how i process one or two in each category first i take everything out of the box and i put it to one side on my desk and i only put back the stuff that's still pending for example a transaction that hasn't processed yet on my bank account this is a bank statement for my new checking account and I've since signed up for paperless. I would have taken care of this as soon as I received it, but I just got a shredder about a week ago. So I'm really excited to review this and just shred it. You know when you order something online and inside the package there's a discount code so you can save money on your next purchase and you're like, ooh, I wanna use this next time. I hope I don't forget I have this. But in the meantime, where am I gonna store this? Well, here's my solution. I rely heavily on my iPhone's reminders app and I have a list called discount codes. I keep track here because I'm often referencing my reminders app when I'm placing online orders. So for example, this came with my last Derm store order and it's a 15% off code. I'm just gonna log it in here and now I can discard this. Under this category falls packages I've sent to friends or merchandise returns and things I want to follow up on, make sure that their items are received. So I'm going to share two examples today. The first one being my Apple AirPods Pro return. My first pair that I purchased in November had an issue with the charging case. Now whenever I return anything, I have a whole step-by-step -step process I always follow. The day I return it, I log the date and item in my waiting for list on my reminders app. I also save the receipt with the tracking number in case anything goes wrong. Wrong. and that way I have proof that I did return the item. Once I get a confirmation email and I see that the refund posted on my bank account, then I'll discard the receipt and I'll also check it off in my waiting for list. Another thing I was keeping track of is a care package I sent to my friends in Korea. If I didn't keep track of this, I could have easily forgotten that I even sent them this package during the holiday rush. For this category, I will decide if I want to store something digitally or physically. This one in particular, I'd like to store digitally. It's a note from my friend Scott's daughter, Kainani, and I'm going to scan it and put it into my mementos folder in Evernote. Next, I have something I'd like to store both digitally and physically. So the first one is a Christmas card from my friend Elise, and I would like to scan it and keep this. Now, I already have a file for Elise and her fiance Marshall in my Evernote, so it's gonna be fun to just add it in there. And I have a card from their previous year as well. And it seems like it's a tradition where they send me a big ass photo of themselves. So for this one, um, I am going to take some washi tape and I'm gonna hang it up in one of the doors of one of my cabinets in the house. I love randomly seeing my friends throughout our home when we open up our cabinets. 
For manuals, I have to decide if I want to keep them physically, digitally, or discard them. If it's one I can't locate easily online and there are way too many pages to scan, I will keep it and create a folder in our physical filing box. And I'll label it and store it in there. If it's one that's easily found online, I can just recycle it or toss it. If I can't find it online and it's only a few pages, I will scan it and stored in my digital filing cabinet in Evernote. When Brandon and I were in Shanghai for Christmas and New Year's, I bought this Muji aromatic humidifier and I just thought it was a regular extra strength diffuser, but nope. It turns out it's a humidifier that you can also diffuse essential oils with. So cool, right? Except I had no idea how to operate it. I mean, I thoroughly researched online and there was no manual or any instructions available online. And then I tried using the Google Translate app, the camera on it to translate it and it was pretty frustrating. I finally contacted Muji about an English manual and I added January 4th reply from Muji to my waiting for list in case I needed to follow up with them if I didn't hear back from them. Four days later, they emailed me a PDF manual that I have now saved in Evernote so I can throw this out and I'll know where to put the essential oil and how to clean it properly. I'm very proud of solving this issue by the way. This is very specific and I almost thought of not including it, but it is something that I had to process, so here it is. I bought this shirt from the brand Redone, and what's really cool is, within the first year of purchase, if a seam or stitch tears, they'll replace it for free. But I do have to register my shirt, which is probably one of the fanciest things I've ever said about a t-shirt I own. Here are many of our receipts, mostly for groceries, restaurants, home supplies, gifts, etc. And the reason I hold on to them is one, if I make a cash purchase, I need to manually log them into Mint. That's where my husband and I keep track of our budget and put them in the right category. That way I can keep track of how much we spend in each category every month. For example, groceries. If it's a debit card or credit card purchase, then I have to wait for it to post on my online bank statement and Mint. And then once the amount is correct, I can categorize it properly and then get rid of the receipt. And the last reason I hold on to receipts is obviously in case of returns. If there's an item I'm considering not keeping, I can hold on to the receipt for a certain amount of time and it'll sit in here until I make my decision. Labeling the receipt on top is super helpful and it saves time when you're looking for something specific. So what part of this video did you find the most helpful? Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you'd like to share your tips and tricks on how you process papers at home, I'd love to hear about them too. In my next organization video, I'll give you a tour of my desk. So what's on my desk, what's in my drawers, and how I keep it organized. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when I upload. And in the meanwhile, check out some of the other videos that I've recently uploaded. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.